this is Yami, your Latina next door, and I am back with another video. And as you know, I bought my house a few months ago, but my craft room is like non-existent. Um, I have not done anything with it. And I've joined several other bloggers who have either no craft spaces or just hot mess craft spaces. And we're trying to um, get our stuff together this January so that we can bring more amazing stuff for you guys. We even have like a preview video so that way you guys can see what other bloggers are involved and also what their craft room hot messes entail. So I will link to that below that way you guys can take a look at it really quick. So in this video, I want to kind of walk you guys through where we started from and kind of how we progressed and what I did to try to save a little bit of money. And then at the end of it, we'll go over, you know, where we are and why we're kind of a little bit behind, unfortunately. Um, I had a couple of hiccups along the way, but um, you know, I think we're moving along now and it's coming together really nicely. All right, so let's take a look at what we've been working on this week. As you can see, we are starting prep work for the paint. And we like to use this um, tape and paper combo for the edges of the walls. We don't really like to use an entire drop cloth. First of all, you never really find one um, big enough for an entire room anyways. And these are great because they get up to, all the way to the baseboards and they protect where you're gonna be directly painting. And as you can see also, we don't cover the entire baseboard we don't go to the edge because every time um, we paint a room, we also tackle the baseboards. I might as well um, have a fresh coat of paint on those whenever I have a fresh coat of paint on the walls. It just makes everything look a lot nicer and um, cleaner and it just it, it just does a better um, job at you know finishing your room. So, so as you can see, we got our first coat done. It looks a little dark in here uh, um, on film just because we took out that fixture. <clears throat> and I found out when we took it out that it was getting excessively hot and there was even some insulation in there to help, you know, uh, um, how do you say, help with the heat. So I'm kind of glad we took it down because that light was so hot. Uh, I was just scared it would become a fire hazard. So looks like I am getting a new light fixture. <laughs> So here's that light fixture that we actually took down. Um, as you can see, it's just not something that I would want to have in a craft room anyways because these little um, glass spears just kind of disperse the light in lots of different angles. And it just wasn't uh, great. But um, also, above here you can see the insulation that's supposed to stop the heat from the actual lamp to go into the drywall up above it. Well, when we took it down, this thing right here, we couldn't even touch it. It was so hot. We were like, no, I, I was just not comfortable putting it back up there. And apparently it was safe. The people had it here for, you know, several years before we moved in, never did anything. But for me personally, it just both, you know, as far as the practical sense is giving me light for my craft room, it wasn't going to work. And two, I just personally didn't feel comfortable with that being so hot up there because the lights are actually really close to this part, which is why it gets so hot. Um... So yeah, this was the light fixture that we took down. So here's the room after four coats of paint. Now, if we were to do this at the end, we probably would have primed the walls. But since we didn't need to with our burgundy walls in our office, we didn't think we would need to here. Apparently we were wrong. And this is the light fixture that we actually replaced the other one with. And I like it better. It's more my style. It's more of that, what I like to call the Hamptons farmhouse style that I like so much. It's, um, it's open. It's got that rustic feel, but it also has that 
you know, pretty chandelier um, look to it. So it's a little bit fancy as well. Perfect for my woman's cave slash craft room. Now I had more plans to, you know, um, do more updating. Right now that back wall with the window is just too white, I think. I think there needs to be something there. It's it's an all white room and it brings a lot of light now. I'm kind of glad um, that it brightened everything up, but now it's just too white to me. And I was supposed to get um, my shelves that were in there originally painted, but unfortunately the paint was back ordered um, for a while. and. Finally, I received it, so right now I'm working on painting those and adding them to um, the actual room. Then there was the IKEA um, uh, square shelves. I was supposed to, I was thinking about using the table that attaches to that, but then I, I thought about it and I was like, that's not very much workspace. And also, I was gonna have to sit in a corner because there was only one place that that would actually sit upright, and I really don't have any other place to put that in the house. So, I figured, okay, why don't I just use it differently and then buy a table for the center of my craft room that has a bigger surface and um, I could still use that unit. So um, right now we have it on its side and I think it's gonna work much better for what I'm gonna um, be using it in the end. So as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want, subscribe so that you can get notified um, of my next upload. That way you guys can see the tra entire transformation of this craft room from week to week. You should be getting the entire thing completed at the end of January. And I'm excited, I'm looking forward to it, and hopefully I'll make that deadline. So make sure you hit subscribe and stay tuned until the end. Bye.